Great. Coach Dalton? Shane, when you looked at the film, the protection issues, was it anything specific that was jumping out or just athletic ability? Was no, I mean, um, you know, it was just, it wasn't one particular guy. It was just different people at different times. There was certain situations we had really good protection, and then we had some where it broke down, you know. So, I mean, it's just growing pains. We've got some young guys playing and uh, trying to protect them as much as I can. And then sometimes when we open up and want to take shots, it doesn't work out. Sometimes when we take shots, it does work out. So, it's a gamble. Speaking of those young guys with Vic George, are you, is he kind of where you thought he'd be playing a true freshman at tackle? Yeah, I mean, guys, he's 18 years old. You know, it's going to be some growing pains. If nobody thought that, then a little bit delusional. On the other side, kind of going back for a few years now, probably to when you, they were still in the Big 12 and you saw them in West Virginia, Missouri's had great defensive line and they seem to have a reputation for developing those guys and, and having a nice pass rush. What do you see? Same thing. Just, it's going to be the same every week. That's not going to change. I mean, so I mean, but it's the same. I mean, it's the way football is today. I mean, people are, are scheming their defenses to rush the passion in this league and every league. And so, I mean, you just got to be aware of who their best players are and protect as much as you can. Try to be as balanced as you can be to take some pressure off the uh, pass rush and take shots. You know, you got to be, you got to take shots when you think you can. And that's just the way it is. It's the way football is today. They've got a freshman that's sort of slid into the starting lineup now, a big kid that seems pretty disruptive. What do you see? Yeah, really good player. They got a few of them up front. Have you ever coached a receiver that struggled with drops and just how have you sort of maybe helped him rebound from those sort of struggles? I mean, I've never known of a receiver that didn't drop a pass. You guys are making way too much of that. I mean, I'm just being honest with you. I've never had one that didn't. Kevin White dropped balls. Guess what? He's a six pick overall. You know? Have you ever made a mistake? All right. What'd you do about it? Went back, fixed it. You learned it, moved on, right? Well, that's what we're doing. He's going to drop another one one day, guys. I mean, you know, he makes a lot of them too. Is it sort of unfortunate for him that it happened, that the timing of them, that they're both right at the beginning and, oh, yeah. and they're followed by a pay? That seems like that's probably <laughs> obviously as, you'd like for him to catch as accentuated why passes. those were. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, obviously, you'd like to catch touchdown passes. Especially, I mean, when you're going against a defense that's a good defense, you know, they were at full strength, and I will give them credit. They had, they played well, and, and they, got a, they got a really good defense moving forward, but we had our opportunities, you know. We knew going to that game that it was going to be a struggle, like good defenses. I mean, we had to, when we got opportunities, we had to take advantage of them, and we did, you know. So, I mean, we got the ball down inside the five a couple times and didn't get but three points out of it. If we score a touchdown there, we win games. And we had stuff that could have scored in those situations, and we didn't make a play. And so, you know, we just got to learn from it and move on. The biggest learning lesson is understanding that when you play defenses like that and you have opportunities and you don't make plays, you're probably going to get beat. Stoops talked about the, the type of passes he called layups. In other words, a pass that you shouldn't catch. Yeah. Describe some of the kind of passes he's talking about. Well, just the ones that hit your hands. I mean, he's talking about routine plays, right? Just short along, just in, just in the Yeah, I mean, that, I mean, if you're open and the ball hits your hands, it should be a routine play. But, I mean, you know, I mean, obviously we had a few drops that game and to sit here and think that that's not going to happen. We got to overcome. We got to overcome, you know. And so, I mean, the biggest problem with those kind of plays is if you look at it through the scope of the game, you know, we, we score there, and then two plays later, we give them a pick that goes back and it then sets up a touchdown. Well, that's a 14 point swing. That's big. That's a huge play, you know. And so, I mean, we have to capitalize on our opportunities because you never know what's going to happen the next play. And so, I mean, you know, it's unfortunate. You said on Saturday that they were a resilient group. You weren't worried about confidence being shaken. Did you see that this week? Did you no, see uh, the resilience? That was one of the better Tuesday practices we've had. And so the, what I told them was simple. I mean, we didn't play good Saturday. I mean, obviously everybody in the stadium can say that, you know. But if you watched Monday Night Football last night, the coach didn't play very good. And so it happens. It happens in this game that every now and again, you're going to have a game that you don't play well. And so you got to move on. If you let that game linger, then it's a problem. And so in this deal, when you don't play well, and look, we didn't play well as a group. We didn't coach well as a group. We all have to do better. And so we got to learn from it and move on. And it just, it happens. It happens across the nation every week. And so it happened to us Saturday. Am I happy about it? No, <laughs> I'm not happy about it. Like everybody else around here isn't. And so we're going to do something about it. What was your message to Patrick when you went back and watched the film? 
Well, Bay, I mean, he had about five or six opportunities to change the game, and that was my message to him. You know, through the course of the game, obviously you got to pick and choose your shots. When we did, and when we had good protection, and we had opportunities, you know, we didn't capitalize on them. And so he knows that he's got to make those plays. And so nobody has to tell him that. But I mean, the one thing about playing quarterback is, it's when things are going really good, you get too much credit, and when things are going bad, you get too much blame. That's just the nature of the position. And so we got 11 guys out there that have to do their job, you know, collectively. And so we got to get better as a group, you know, not just one person. Does he have to play better? Yes, he has to play better. Do I have to do better? Yes. Does everybody have to do better? Yes. But I mean, we can't, and that was my first message to the group on Monday is, point your finger at yourself, you know. When you get done with that game on Saturday and you sit there on Sunday, look at what you could have done to change the game, not what somebody else could have done. And that's the way you got to view it. You said Saturday night you could see in some guys' eyes that they were pressing, that they wanted so bad to make a, a play, they were maybe overdoing it. When you see that, how do you, I guess, how do you try to get them snapped out of that? I don't know if you can, to be honest with you. I think, um, I think for the most part, you can want something too much, if that makes any sense. And so really, I told the guys this week is we need to care a little less, you know? We need to care a little less and go out there and play a little looser. Because in that game Saturday, we were just too uptight. You know, we were we wanted it too bad, and we were just pressing too hard and things. And when you press like that, naturally things aren't going to happen. It just doesn't. And so we just need to care a little bit less and let the chips fall where they may and go out there and just play with a little bit more reckless abandonment and, and just go play hard and just let the chips fall where they may. You you had said in some interview recently that, or maybe the spring, that. When people are playing like they're in the backyard, that's yeah. when it, I mean, is that what you're looking for? Like, Absolutely. We need to play like we play at practice, you know, and just play loose. I think a lot of times in the game, we're just scared to make mistakes, you know, scared to do things that I see them do every day at practice. And so, I mean, we just need to go out there and put the ball down and play like nobody's in the stadium and we'll be fine. Have you encountered that before in oh, your absolutely. coaching career? How, yeah. how do you get them out of that? I mean, do exactly what we did the last two days. Talk to them about it, sit them down, explain to them the process, explain to them that they aren't the only group that's ever went through this, you know. This is pretty common in this profession, you know. We got a lot of young guys out there. It was a big game. We wanted to win the game. We wanted to, we wanted to show Big Blue Nation to the world in the worst way possible, coaches and players, and we failed. We failed because we just tried too damn hard, you know. And in, in a way, we got to play a lot looser. And that's, just, and that's just offensive football. You know, it's just the way it is offensively. If you go out there and you try to force things and you try to play tight, it's not going to work. And how much of it does it just come down to the fact that Florida's pretty good defensively? A lot. You know, I think, I mean, you're not going to have a statistical day like we've had in the past against people against them, I don't think. I mean, you're not going to sit there and put up 600 yards. You know, I don't think against them you can sit there and throw the ball 50 or 60 times unless you want to you know, go to the hospital after the game. I mean, they're a good defense. But with those schematically and personnel good defenses, I mean, we, got, we did a good job of getting the ball down there. And we gotta, you got to take advantage of those opportunities and you win the game, you know? I mean, we knew it was going to be, you know, going into the game, I felt like it was going to be somewhat low scoring game. And really, to be honest with you, I felt like we were going to get our opportunities, and if we didn't give them anything cheap offensively, like we did against South Carolina and this game, then we would probably win the game, and that's exactly what happened. You know, the first drive, you know, we went out there and gave them something cheap, and ultimately that's what caused us the fate, you know, really, if you look at it. Because if you look at those two swings, you know, you never know what's going to happen after that drive, you know, because that can, that can flip the whole momentum, and it can relax us and get us playing better, you know rather than getting more uptight and trying to press harder. There's a lot of factors that are involved in, you know, doing good or bad. And so I knew going into the game that it was going to be a struggle. I knew it was going to be a great match. I knew we had to pick and choose our shots. And, you know, ultimately, you know, we didn't capitalize on those opportunities. We got it down there a couple times really close. And, you know, a couple of them were bad calls and a couple of them were missed opportunities. You know, I didn't do perfect either and nobody, and I never will. If, if, and that's what I told the group too. If they're expecting perfect calls and perfect games, and they're never going to get that. I've, we've never done that one time. 
We just got to make plays when opportunities are presented. You use the tight end a lot in the backfield so far this season. Does that have as much to do with those guys, you know, not seeing a lot of passes come their way at this point? Well, I mean, we're we're getting those guys out in routes, but it's like I told all the receivers. I mean, how many? But we didn't complete a lot of balls Saturday, and so I mean, nobody's getting a lot of touches. We were trying to change that, obviously, but the bottom line is you got to get open too, and so. You know, that's the that's the biggest factor in getting the football thrown to you, is getting open. And so we're, we're getting those guys out in routes, but, I mean, I'm not sitting there coaching the quarterbacks to throw at the covered people. You know, they do sometimes, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, we're getting them out in routes. And, look, everybody's talking about tight ends getting involved. The kid's a true freshman, too, you know. And so he's going to get involved. But it's like everything else. If we – try to force play something that he's never I mean them just let things happen everybody just needs to let it happen <laughs> it will happen I promise you you said you made you, you yourself made some bad calls was there one or two that ate at just Saturday night when you I thought when we were backed up on the goal line I put us in a bad situation you know we, we were backed up and we ran the ball and got about five or six yards and I tried to take a shot and they they ended up playing cover two they guessed right if they play what they played the first snap, then we probably – I was just trying to get some one-on-one match, one -on -one matchups and go vertical to try to get a chunk yards, you know. And um, and they went they went too high, and it was a wasted opportunity. And then we ended up going three and out, backed up, which puts them on a short field. That was a, that was a bad – that was bad on me, you know. I didn't think I put our – I didn't think I put our guys in, in position to be successful there. I should have been more conservative. And just and just got a first down, or tried to get a first down, and and move the field and flip the field. You know, really, when you're backed up, you know, ultimately you want to flip the field back. Even if you don't score, if you can get a couple first downs and get the field foot back, you have that's a positive. You know, right. and really, I mean, if you look at us being backed up, and I think this is what factored in my mind, we're like 75% touchdowns backed up in, inside the five. We've been driving the whole right. field a lot. Did a 99-yard drive first. Game. Yeah, and so we had two, 95 and 96. And so I think that factored into my mind. I even told the group, I said, we love this. You know, let's go score. And so I got probably a little too aggressive there. And so, Are you like uh, you tell the players to do? do? Can you forget a bad call and go? No, I can forget about it. I mean, I move on during the course of the game. But, I mean, after the game, you after the game it's it. hard for me. Because after the game, you know, I don't blame anybody but myself. And, I mean, you know, I sit there after the game and I sit at home and sit up and don't sleep. And, and ultimately, I want what's best for this program and what's best for our kids. And I mean, I want to put a good product out there and I want to score a lot of points. And it didn't happen. And so ultimately, I self reflect on myself and just try to figure out what I could do different to change the situation. And I think that there was two or three situations that I probably mishandled. And ultimately, I can think of two off the top of my head. But those things are going to happen too. I mean, I mean, you're going to have drives that that you don't do well. And I think at the end of the game, there, 